Hey, what's going on, guys? My name is Sean, and I am continuing my duel against X King Kyber X's Nordic Tech. This is round two out of our two or three duel. If you haven't seen round one, check out the link in the description or check out anywhere on the channel. I'm sure you'll be able to find it very quickly. I'm using my Fairy Dragon Gadgetatron Dragon deck, whatever I'm giving that deck's name is, um, against his Nordic deck. He managed to beat me in the first round, so we're going to carry on going head to head in this round. And hopefully I can take a win back from him. Sorry that this duel has started midway. In case you didn't watch the first round. And um, that is because I recorded this using the PlayStation 4 Share Factory. A really, really great software that is um, embedded into a PlayStation and comes out of the box with it. However, it does have a 15 minute limit. And therefore only the last 15 minutes of the match got um, recorded. So, I'm summoning an Ancient Fairy Dragon here using um, Gale the Whirlwind and Bora the Spear. And by summoning the Ancient Fairy Dragon, I'm going to have a bigger monster to be able to attack over my opponent. But what I'm using it here for is to destroy his field spell. Nordics have a field spell called the Northern Lights. And the Northern Lights is a really good field spell for Nordic monsters. Because what happens is, um, as long as it's on the field, Nordic monsters cannot be destroyed by battle. But when you destroy it, all will Nordic monsters get destroyed. Unfortunately, I don't get that second part of the effect. But... Um, getting a, rid of that field spell card is really really helpful. What's also really great about Fairy Dragon's effect is that um, by destroying a field spell card on the field, I get to search one out for my deck. And I'm going to set out um, Gear Town. I'll oh, search out Gear Town that is. Um, there's no use for me to use Gear Town just yet. I'm going to have to maybe wait till the next turn to hopefully pop it off. Assuming Fairy Dragon can live that long. But uh, for now, I'm just going to attack into his face down monster, which is Garmur of the Nordic Beasts. Um, that card is nothing uh, too significant right now. It has a little cool effect, but it's nothing too special right now. So the attack's going to go through, and then my opponent is thinking about something to do. The Nordic monsters do have some monsters which trigger it from the hand, like this one here. Now I'm going to say this wrong, but it's going to something like Tanning Goater. I'm going to call him Tanning Goat. Tanning Goat of the Nordic Beasts. He can special summon himself to the field um, when a Nordic monster is destroyed. Nordic monsters or Nordic beasts seem to be all about keeping their field presence in order to have enough monsters on the field to do synchro summons. As my opponent did in the last duel where he summoned Odin, father of the Nordic, whatever, and um, that won the game for him. So um, nothing I can do here right now. Uh, my back row is completely full. Which is something I really try to avoid doing. I do have a good advantage over my opponent, but having my back row full is a bit of a disadvantage. And um, I've played Gear Town just in the hopes that maybe my opponent might accidentally destroy it somehow, but he probably won't do that, and that would be really unsmart to do. Or unwise, I should say. Okay, so now it is King Kyber's turn. He's got six cards in total, as opposed to my eight, but. Um, that's still really, really good for him. We're still in quite an even position here. I have an extra 1,000 life points just thanks to Ancient Fairy Dragon's effect. But we're still in the early um, turns of the game. So we will see um, if he can maybe make a good move here. He's flip summoned um, another monster. And um, now he's put them both into attack. And um, the effect of Tanning Goat is being activated. And what that effect is, is that when it is turned from um, attack, so from defense to attack, or I think it just has to change his battle position, he gets a special summon a monster from his deck. But I'm gonna respond to that, and I'm gonna stop that special summoning from happening by activating Vanity's Emptiness. Vanity's Emptiness is a really good continuous spell card, and it shuts down special summon, so he won't be able to special summon his monster from his deck, which is really unfortunate for him. At the moment, I'm in a really confident position here. I've got a really strong monster on the field. I've got, um, I've got Vanity's Emptiness on the field, so it's not going to be easy to destroy that. And my opponent can't special summon at all. So he normal summons um, Gold Face. Gold Face of the Nordic Beast. These monsters have very weird names than their Nordic names. And as I said in the last duel, I'm not really familiar with this archetype, so it's um, a bit of a learning process for me here. I'm not sure why he summoned that, that monster. Maybe he thought he was on a synchro summon, but he can't do that just yet. Who knows, though? Okay, so fortunately I managed to draw into Allure of Darkness, but I can't play it. And now my opponent's going to play Nordic Relic Gunga. 
what this card does is you have to banish one Acer monster from his field. And I think all the Nordic monsters are classified as Acer monsters. If I'm wrong about that, I might be. And by doing so, he's going to get to destroy one monster on my field. Now, um, what's um, really good about that card is that in two turns time, the monster that he banished will come back to his field. So it does have a cost, but he will get that um, cost back in two turns time. It's a really, really nice little card. It kind of reminds me of, um, what's that card that we least have? Icarus Attack. Kind of reminds me of Icarus Attack, but um, it's a nice even trade and um, a very versatile card. So I played Earlier of Darkness, I've drawn two cards, and I'm going to banish Steam the Cloak and um, keep Pot of Duality. I'm going to play Pot of Duality now to excavate the top three cards in my deck. Hopefully dig for something which is going to help me in this situation right now. There is Zephyros the Elite, Bottomless Trap Hole, and we're going to get Borrow the Spear. I'm probably going to go for Zephyros the Elite, or maybe Borrow the Spear. I could normal summon Borrow the Spear. Yes, I'm going to go for Borrow the Spear. If I normal summon Borrow the Spear, then Black Whirlwind will kick in and I'll be able to search out um, Zephyros the Elite for free. So, let's do that right now. Let's summon Borrow the Spear. No, we don't need to activate an effect. Yes, let's use Black Whirlwind. A really, really good searcher card here. And um, that's going to help me bring out Zephyros the Elite. I can't play him this turn, unfortunately, because I'm only restricted to normal summons or sets this turn. That is a part of duality, but it's okay. I can use him in the next turn. Also, while I'm here, um, man, that new ban list, huh? I know it's not really new. It's been out for a little while, but man... Um, I went to a Yu-Gi-Oh tournament last week, a real life one, and yeah, it kind of got me wanting to really uh, maybe think about start playing the game again. It was really, really cool to see, but um, when I saw things like reinforcement in the army getting restricted to one, I was like, wow, just that sucks. I understand that you might want to hit Satana Knights a bit, but just, uh, completely limiting re reinforcement in the army is just like, eh, that kills a lot of warrior decks. Anyway, we're going to move on from here. It is King Kyber's turn. He's going to play Mystical Space Typhoon. I don't know what he's going to destroy. He's going to destroy my most recent face down card. I'm going to chain, play MST. And now I messed up here. I actually messed up here. I go to destroy Gear Town, but I forgot that I was actually in the middle of a chain. So I'm going to destroy Gear Town. But because Gear Town has an optional effect, because its effect says you can special summon if you want to, not you must special summon or you or just special summon a monster, um, that's going to make me f uh, miss the timing. It can't activate in the middle of a chain and it's not compulsory so it won't activate straight away after the chain. Um, that really sucks, I really wish I didn't make that mistake but hey lessons learned. Okay, so um, what am I going to do this turn, I'm probably just going to attack or bring out Sephiroth and then attack my opponent, try to push for some life points here. But we will soon see. My opponent is thinking. And he's put down one more monster. And yeah, I think that's it. That's gonna be it for his turn. And Gunga's effect is counting down, so he's gonna get back that um, monster that he banished sometime soon. And yep, now it's my turn here. I managed to draw into Shura, which is a really good pull. Gonna be able to summon Shura and then go to attack my opponent. But first, I'm going to use Black Whirlwind. By using Black Whirlwind, I will now be able to get another Black Queen from my deck to my hand. And I'm gonna grab a Gale the Whirlwind, which is a really good opportunity to do so because um, I can actually special summon Gale from my hand if I wanted to. And so I'm gonna do that right now. I'm not sure why. I'd I'm not sure I didn't get another Bora. Probably would have been better to get another Bora, but I was probably thinking that I want to Synchro Summon or have the option to Synchro Summon and therefore I need a Tuna Monster. Okay, so Shura is going to attack that face down card and if this is if this works well, I should be able to destroy my opponent's monster, which I will be able to do. And now using Shura, the Blue Flames effect, I'm going to be able to Special Summon one Black Witty Monster from my deck to my field. I have a feeling that I might be out of Black Wing cards now. So Black Wing might not be of any more use to me. Okay. Um, I don't know why I attacked with Gale here. I shouldn't really attack with Gale here. I should attack with Bora. Because uh, Bora has a piercing effect. 
But there's a mistake here. So um, Gale's gonna attack the um, defense position monster. And I'm just reading his effect. He does have an effect that when he is destroyed by a battle and sent to the graveyard, you can special summon two Nordic B. Oh, this is why I didn't attack with Bora. So um, he's gonna summon two tokens when that's destroyed. Okay. So that's gonna go through. And uh, is he gonna summon those tokens? Is he gonna use the effect? Yes, he is. So he's gonna summon two Nordic Beast tokens. And that's gonna make a bit of a wall for him. But fortunately for me, I have Bora the Spear. And when I attack with Bora the Spear, it does piercing damage to a defense decision monster. So I would have got more damage out of this than if I attacked the beast itself. So that's gonna do um, 1700 damage to my opponent. And now I'm gonna attack with the other Gale that I brought out this turn. In a really solid position here. Should be able to um, kind of wrap this up. My opponent only has one more card left. But who knows, he might be able to make a good comeback. And I'm just considering my options here. If there's anything I want to Synchro Summon or Xe Summon into, I could summon um, Ancient PC Dragon, but I don't think it's any of any use here right now. No, it's not going to be of any use. Let's just end our turn. I'm in a really good position here. I have Solemn Warning face down and some other cards as well, so it's not really going to... It's going to be really hard for my opponent to turn this around. But then again, you know what? He's probably going to draw into Dark Hole or Raggeki. Knowing my luck, that could probably happen. Ah, oh, he doesn't look like it happened. Okay, one face down card on the field. And now by um, his second end phase, he's now going to be able to bring back that goat. Although, I don't know if it's going to really help him here in this situation. I wonder what the best monster would be to use with that banishing card. Okay, so what am I going to do this turn? I have many options here. I'm probably just going to attack. Probably the easiest thing to do right now. So Shura will attack that um, Tanning Goat. I don't have any more black wings in my deck, so I can't use this effect to bring out another one, unfortunately. Sephir uh, not Sephiroth, Bora attacks the face down card, and we'll do some piercing damage on um, Chewing that as well. Another Tadding Goat. And now I'm going to attack with the two Gales. There's one. And there's the other. Black Wings are really, really good. I like Black Wings. I think they've got a lot of good tools. They aren't as powerful as they once were because um, other decks just got much more powerful than they did. But I think they're really, really good. They have a very clear goal in mind and they really work well when they're together. I think Crow was the best duelist out of the 5D storyline. And there's the dark hole, of course. Of course it happened. I really should have se XE summoned into um, number 101, Silent Honor Arc, and that would have protected myself from being destroyed. But, yeah, I didn't do it. But, still in a good position here. Still have plenty of resources here. If I might actually even be able to win this turn. If I can play smart. Well, maybe not. Yep, gonna just attack with Sephiroth. Sephiroth is gonna attack my opponent directly. That's on new 1600. All right, down to the last turn for my opponent, or what could be the last turn for my opponent, and we will see. Does he have anything at all to come back with? Most likely not. No, he surrendered. Okay, guys, so that's 1-1 uh, to me, 1-1 uh, to Kyber and I. So hopefully you guys will tune in for the next episode where we'll be finishing off our match. See you then. Take care.